the gamers table. It is Monday, and we're viewing Discord World. More pork. pork. More pork. Dang, I was trying to say at the same time you were. It's like, no. <laughs> Uncle more pork. I do enjoy the game a lot. It is a lot of fun. There's a lot of douchebaggery in it. Uncle more pork is a. Oh, more pork. More pork. pork. It doesn't even say Discord. It says Uncle more pork. It's a really simple game. When it's your turn, you play a card, do what it says on it, then fill your hand back up to five cards. Next player to end the same, and so on until someone declares they've won the game or the deck of cards runs out. What you need to do to win the game depends on the secret personality that is assigned to you at the start of the game. You must keep your aim secret for other players at the same time try to define what your competitors are up to and make sure they do not beat you to the ultimate prize, Lordship of the Most Unruly City in Discworld. Mm -hmm. Poor Craig, Mr. Chaos himself, loves to chain the random event cards, which can hurt him just as much as the rest of the players. And you end up ruining your buildings, you know, just killing people off, you know, just kind of all kinds of crazy stuff. But it's always fun to try and chain the cards together if you can. You get more done that way. This game is fun. Yes, it's, it is. It's random, it's chaotic, but it's fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, more pork chaos. Okay, of the... Especially when Craig is playing. Oh. This one, you do not <laughs> need to know anything about the Terry Pratchett books or the world or anything to enjoy this game. Yeah, Which I agree. Good. But if you do know stuff about that world, a lot of it makes even more sense. It's even more, more fun. And it's referring to a lot of the books, in, especially in the events that happen. I mean, I like the different wind conditions for other people trying to figure out what the other person might be and make sure they don't get their win condition. I mean, the more you play it, the more fun it's going to be because then you're more aware of the different uh, win conditions that other people can have, and then it just makes the game more deep. So you have um, several different personalities that you can be, and that is your win condition for the game. Um, many of them will have to get so many areas under control, Oh, right. one of them has to get a whole bunch of minions in different areas, one of them has to get a lot of money, one of them has to get a lot of trouble on the board, and the other one just, if all the cards run out, I win! Yeah. So far, the hardest one Whoever to complete is just stop everyone else the area wins. control. You need to build buildings, five buildings, and then you'll win, but nobody's been able to do that yet. That also varies on the number of players, too. Yes. Yeah, but it, it's tough. Yeah, we've... Especially well, when you play with well, playing, that, that seems to be the hardest. Is Mr. Random getting Events the, here. Getting the buildings to survive when somebody's causing earthquakes and yeah. fires and floods and oh my. You <laughs> do draw cards in this. Uh, you can get chains going of cards. Uh, it depends on the symbols on the cards, which you're allowed to do. And some of them are random events. There is a random event deck separate but from the other deck. happened once. Yes, it only ever happened once. But and Mr. They all happen once when Mr. Craig Random is here likes to chain all those random things together and just annihilate everything that's ever been built. Discworld Ankhmore Pork is a fun game, it's a very chaotic game, and the flavor of the Discworld universe is there. It's definitely there in almost everything you're doing. But it's not part of the game the way it is in the other Discworld game, Guards Guards. In Discworld Ankhmore Park, you don't need to have read the novels to enjoy the game. You will, there was um, a whole bunch of different action cards you can get, and there are two different colors. They're brown and green. And the one set, the brown ones, you start off with at the top of the deck, and then you go through those and then start off the green ones. The green ones have more random events, more chains, more effects on them because they're in the latter half of the game. And it's sort of a catch-up mechanism. If you're going for something like you need a lot of trouble on the board and you haven't managed to get a lot of trouble on the board. In the latter half of the game, these cards allow you to start throwing the random events out, get more trouble on the board, get rid of other people's buildings, and maybe get your win condition. But the problem is if you're drawing all those cards and somebody has the Commander Vimes card that's when the deck runs out, I win, you could be handing them the win. Yep. Oh yes. You, that's one thing yeah. about this game I've noticed. Like the more you play it, the better it becomes because you're more aware of the win everybody's win condition, then you have to kind of play a little bit paranoid. You're, okay, no, you can't have too many minions because you might have that guy or oh we gotta be careful he doesn't build yeah, there's seven another trouble building. on the board. Can we well, remove one? There's different ways of winning here too, but uh, some of them you might it might look like you're trying to go for that win condition when you're really going for another one just because 
uh, what you need to do to collect some uh, better money or more money you need to build some buildings and you get the income from those yeah. city locations so it might look like you're trying to control areas when really you're just trying to win by the money factor there's a number of different things like Building the minions too yeah. count as victory points at the end if you've got a, a more minions out than anyone else you're going to get more victory points but that might not necessarily be your win condition. Yeah, but yeah and if you get, somebody gets their win condition, it doesn't matter how many points you yes. have, they got their win the condition. The victory points only matter at the end of the game if nobody yeah. has a win condition. But whether building is your goal or not, getting buildings out there really helps because oh, the city sure. cards are very helpful. Very, very helpful. You, you need it all on the board. Although you're with Craig in the game, you're probably not likely to hang on to him for very long. Yeah, Craig. Uh, yeah, hold on to him at least till we get through the brown cards into the green ones. <laughs> so wrapping up for Discworld. One more bark. Anything this time? I gave you the no, chance. No, he did it. <laughs> Let him do it. Yes. I said it enough. You say it too many times. It's not funny anymore. No, oh, it's always funny. More pork. <laughs> I'll give Discworld on for pork a ten. This one definitely has the Discworld theme and yes. it sticks to it. But it's not something that's overwhelming you that you need to know the novels. Mm -hmm. So the theme is there and you'll get more enjoyment out of it if you read the novels, but you haven't. It's still good. I enjoyed it without reading the novels. Yeah. Same here. Uh, fun to play? Oh, hell yeah, this is fun to play. Chaotic. It's nasty, it's, oh, it's nasty chaotic and crazy and nasty. Douchebaggery! Definitely douchebaggery. And easy to teach? Meh. Not too do bad. Do what the symbol says on the card, read the card, do Pretty it. easy, yeah. Yep. The rules are really simple, so this one by my three legs of gaming has to get a 10. It's got everything that I look for in Three legs of gaming. Yes, three legs of gaming. The tripod of gaming. The trifecta of gaming. Watch the other episodes. I use all those references. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've heard the tripod of gaming. So the puppeteer of gaming, of gaming for Larry Niven fans. Uh, I'm going to give this one an 8.5. I really enjoy this one. Uh, okay, I I'm shocked. I thought you were going to give it a It might be a little... No. I was uh, no. where you were going to give it a seven. It's a little chaotic. You know, it's... Some of the personalities are a little easier to win by, and others are just, like, the buildings are just next to impossible so far. Uh, but other than that, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to give it the points just for the fun, and, the, the, like, the theme works. It all works together. Just a little too chaotic. I give the squirrel Onk Warbark a 7.5. This game is nasty because some of the best cards to play is when the person's down. You know, or oh, yeah. when he just bought a building and he doesn't have enough money to pay the fire brigade. Burn it. That's when you can do the most Burn damage. It. Oh, yeah, you have to. This bum, or both, I can't remember if it was both or just him, stuck me with both of the cards and knocked your hand and I did the very next round. Yeah, you freaking whack. <laughs> Then we burned your house down. There's a lot of different ways to win, and I like that. There's a lot of different paths you can take to try and have fun in this game. And it's it's very much a fun game. So that's it for this episode of uh, The Gamer's Table. Tune in next week for another review of another game. More pork. More pork. <laughs> <laughs>